Welcome back and thank you for tuning in for today's episode of Beyond Borders, the podcast that delves deep into the chilling world of true crime. I'm your host, EJ, and joining me is my esteemed co-host, RW. Today, we will embark on a riveting journey through the darkest corners of human behavior. For today's topic, we are in Japan. Speaking of the disturbing case of Junko Furuta. But before we get started, we'd like to formally introduce ourselves as a group of high school students who are currently in the process of making a true crime podcast for an English project. With each episode, we aim to shed light on the intricate and frequently tragic stories behind some of the most captivating cases in history, while also highlighting the arduous work of the law enforcement officials and investigators who have dedicated their lives to seeking justice for the victims and their families. So join us as we explore the secrets and complexity of some of the most fascinating cases of our time by venturing deeply into the world of true crime. And for our usual disclaimer, we'd like to advise our audience that the content we talk about is all information that we found on the internet, compiling them into one video and meaning no harm or disrespect to any of the individuals we speak of. This podcast is solely for educational and entertainment purposes. And a few content warnings before we start. A lot of our cases are heavy, so the following topics may affect you negatively. Feel free to click off this episode or watch another one that's more suitable for you. We will speak of suicide, rape, extreme profanity, violence, or gore. So to start off, Joko Furuta was a young Japanese girl who tragically became a victim of a horrific crime. Born on January 18, 1971 in Misato, Saitama, Japan, she was 16 years old at the time of her abduction and subsequent ordeal. Junko Furuta attended a high school in Misato in Saitama Prefecture, Japan. She was a popular, attractive kid who loved to be acknowledged, which made some others envious. She did not smoke, drink alcohol, or do drugs, which was viewed as extremely uncool by kids who had more gangster-like tendencies. But that is very common also in today's uh, century. Yeah. Because it is still cool, I guess, to some people to smoke, drink alcohol, go to parties, do drugs, you know? Yeah, yeah. For sure. So this is not any different. Um, but also, while she wasn't searching for a relationship, a guy by the name of Hiroshi Miyano developed a crush on her. However, Junko Furuta rejected him. The thing, however, is nobody dared to speak up to this Hiroshi Miyano guy, since he was the school bully, per se. He was involved with the younger Yakuza members. And if you don't know, the Yakuza is a term commonly used to refer to the various organized crime syndicates in Japan. So they are well known for their involvement of illegal activities such as extortion, gambling, drug trafficking, prostitution, and loan sharking. They operate with the hierarchical structure and adhere to a strict code of conduct known as the Ninkyo, which emphasizes loyalty, respect, and honor. So they are basically a gang. Yeah, glorified gang. They're a glorified gang that's commonly um, associated with just illicit stuff yeah yeah okay so nevertheless um even though uh junko knew that hiroshi miyano was in this gang she had a temerity to object and because of that she was taken hostage on november 25th 1988 by four adolescent boys one of which was hiroshi miyano in the is neighborhood of adachi tokyo the boys brought Junko to the home that belonged to Hiroshi. So this kind of explains how in today's society, when, when people go, oh, just say no when a girl, you know, when a girl has a hard time rejecting, rejecting someone, and people are just like, oh, just say no. But like, it's way harder than that because things like this happen. Yeah, exactly. Because depending on the guy, like mm-hmm. with his, how like, badly he'll take it by his ego. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't know. Like he could have like anger issues or something. But yeah, this is the reality. If a girl says no, this is also someone that could happen. They don't. They don't just walk away if you say no. Yeah. But anyways, the adopt the abductors ordered Junko Furuta to phone her parents while she was being taken hostage, so that she could tell them that she fled and was staying with a friend, insisting that she was not in danger. Junko followed instructions perfectly because she was unable to anticipate what was about to happen and was too terrified to refuse, thereby preventing a manhunt that would have otherwise followed her disappearance. It was asked of Junko to act as one of the male's girlfriends, I'm guessing Hiroshi. Mm -hmm. Yet, despite the fact that it was obvious that she was being held hostage in their home, the parents of Hiroshi did nothing out of fear of retaliation from their own son. They're scared of their own son. Yeah, because they know... So basically, 
Hiroshi has links with the Yakuza, right? Uh huh. His parents know this, and they know that they took this poor girl into their home and is keeping her hostage. But they won't do anything. Like in your case of the Seoul, um, oh uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, Seoul North, story? the South Korean, yes, story? The, the that one. The parents really don't. Okay, the, these don't parents care. they don't really care, but they did nothing because of the fear. So it's not that they don't care, but it's literally they're scared of their own child. Yeah. But these the parents in my story just didn't care. Yeah. So during the 44 days of hell that Junko was held captive, um, these are some of the tortures that she endured. Um, I will be talking about a few graphic details that happened. So if you'd like to fast forward, feel free to. Okay, so here are some of the tortures that she had endured. She was humiliated by being kept naked most of the time. She was raped every day in both the vagina and the anus. More than a hundred men are believed to have raped her. The captor with the Yakuza connections had invited other Yakuza members to go at the 16-year-old. So it is estimated that she had gone through about 500 rapes. And at one point, she was raped by 12 different men in one day. Sorry, Sorry. I had to take a moment because that, that was already a lot. Yeah. Um, right out the gate. So, yeah, she endured physical beatings, included hits with golf clubs and bashing of the face against the cement floor. The 100 men who are believed to have raped her had also reportedly enjoyed urinating on the girl. Frequently, they it turned them on, and she was forced to masturbate in front of them and their guest. She had various objects forced into her vagina and her anus, including a bottle, an iron bar, scissors, roasting needles, grilled chicken skewers, and many more. She was provided with only a limited supply of food or water, was forced to eat live cockroaches, and drink her own urine. They had fireworks forced up her ass and set them off, causing severe burns. Her left nipple was ripped off with pliers. Had She had dumbbells dropped on her stomach while lying on the floor, and her hands and feet were tied up, which resulted in a loss of bowel control. She was hanging from the ceiling and used as a boxing bag. She was kept in a freezer for several hours. Her eyelids were burned off with hot wax and lighters. Her breasts were pierced with sewing needles. They had her vagina and clitoris burnt with cigarettes and lighters and had a hot lit bulb inserted into her vagina and rubbed it until it exploded inside. And these were just some of the many things they did to her. I, that's honestly, enough. Honestly, I don't even know how she was not dead. How do you even like get that mad? And like, on it, like she was just a torture. That, that's like them. that's like worse that's like that's like worse than what like the navy seals do to people like exactly. and like and okay also um i'd like to add that they were no, they were not trying to kill kill her they were just trying to torture her but like but that's so honestly that's so bad i'm just surprised i'm like no offense but i'm just so surprised that she survived all of this i cannot imagine how much pain oh my god that is <laughs> that's like oh that's, that's that's so difficult to imagine though that's this video is sponsored by squarespace whether you need a domain website or online store make it with squarespace this episode is brought to you by squarespace this episode has been brought to you by squarespace this video was supported in part by squarespace this episode is brought to you by squarespace this episode is brought to you by squarespace this week's video is brought to you by squarespace this video is brought to you by squarespace this video was made possible by squarespace i'd like to thank squarespace for sponsoring this week's episode this episode was brought to you by squarespace this episode is brought to you by squarespace brought to you by squarespace 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 is a software that allows users to pre-built website templates and drag and drop elements to create and modify web pages. Partnering with WordPress, you start your website today. So all this torture endured, here are the effects. So due to the buildup of blood in her cavities, Junko Furuta was unable to breathe via her nostrils. So whenever she attempted to drink, her injured internal organs immediately made her puke and further kept her dehydrated. But because she was puking, this enraged the offenders, so they beat her harder in retaliation for ruining the carpet. Which I find so odd, because they were already, like, exploding her up, and they were already, like, <laughs> they had her blood, her blood, bodily fluids yeah. already on the floor. Like, just because she puked, like, why do you think she's puking? It's like, because of you guys. So I just think that is just so... I mean, it's not in your house either. Why do you care about the carpet? Like, that's yeah, such, that like... Yeah, that is just so m much to take in. 
At one point, she attempted to phone the police when the assailants were taking a break after drinking, but she was caught. And as her punishment, she had her feet lit on fire with flaming lighter fluid, and her internal injuries and unsightly bleeding were caused by the perpetrators forcing large bottles up her anus. So, after the 20 days of her trauma, she was left unable to walk due to the severe leg burns and severely damaged muscles. She was unable to use her hands to do anything since the weights had broken her bones and chipped her fingernails. She was obliged to sleep outside on the balcony during the winter when it was freezing too. So, her internal organs and vulva were damaged after 30 days as a result of insertion of foreign objects and burns from cigarettes and lighters, and she was unable to urinate correctly. It took more than an hour to crawl downstairs to the toilet due to her terrible injuries and her hands and feet. Her brain size was diminished and her eardrums were also wounded. And this, honestly, this surprises me because I don't know why it took them 20 days. I don't know why her parents didn't do it. I'm going to assume her parents didn't do anything because it took 20 days. But wasn't she a good child? She didn't drink. She didn't do anything. So why would you just randomly get a phone call like, I'm running away. Like, don't come exactly. after me. I feel like her parents should have been smarter than that. Mm-hmm. Like, they should have at least notified the police. And Hiroshi probably wasn't even at school either. Yeah. So I don't... That should have had a connection. Because knowing, like... I feel like he would have also told people, like, oh, I have a crush on this girl, you know? Yeah. Did the parents, like, know about the torture? Or they just knew that she was there? Obviously, I th- no because if they I'm, knew that was happening downstairs in yeah. their basement, I think I would have ran away. I'm guess I'm guessing they didn't know. I think they actually believed her that she fled to a friend's house, but I, I can't like help but not believe that they didn't have their suspicions. Yeah, like because like, if she was a good child, why would she randomly go to a friend's house and why would they not ask any further questions? Like, oh, what, which call friend? the friends? You know, like let me talk to the friend. Like, wouldn't they go to the friend's house too to make sure? Like, I, if she didn't come back after. 20 days like, like come it's on. your own daughter shouldn't you check like up? you you know your own kid right exactly and then i didn't find any information if the parents even tried to contact her which i find also very odd yeah so many times junka furuta f- pleaded with her captors to simply execute her so she was done with this like she yeah went, i would honestly, not have pled for my life after that i would have already like i would have hoped death as well if yeah. i was going through all dude of that. all your bones are broken you can't you're crawling an hour to the bathroom like nah exactly but they refused to do that courtesy instead they challenged her to a game of mahjong solitaire on january 4th 1998 and mahjong is basically a game of i think um it's like um these little kind of like ceramic like blocks and i think the goal is to line them up correctly yeah and they have a bunch of symbols on them yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah because she's an intelligent little girl she won and this infuriated them obviously so they beat her up with an iron barbell and, and set fire to her arms legs face and stomach after dousing them in lighter fluid junko furuta was already extremely emaciated dehydrated and abused when she went into shock and passed away the next day. But when the authorities finally got their hands on Junko's body, they discovered soda bottles lodged into her anus and severely disfigured face, which rendered it hard for them to recognize her right away. Only her fingerprints could be used to positively identify her. She was pregnant at the time of her death, according to the autopsy records. I have no idea what really happened to her child. I'm guessing it died because... Uh, if she was in a concrete yeah. drum for a little bit it, there's no way that she would have survived yeah the baby would have survived probably looked for her after it's been too long because mm-hmm. i didn't really find anything on like how, how did the police like yeah. go and find her like how do they know to find a like were the, was the drum in like the water or something i'm guessing i'm guessing that because she's been away for too long i think people were finally like suspecting also yeah. as i said like before there's like over 100 men going there I think people would find it suspicious. Yeah, like how there's people coming in and out. Yeah. And also like that, like her friends are probably wondering, like, where is she? Yeah. This is a hard time for me right now. And as a teenage girl, my family doesn't understand what I'm going through. I don't know who to go to for advice. Well, boy, do I have the thing for you. Hi, I'm from the Hell is a Teenage Girl team. We're a school-based podcast that takes you on an exhilarating journey through the roller coaster lives of teenage girls. Join us as we dive deep into our teen girl experience, answering intriguing would-you-rather questions, telling fun and relatable story times, and discussing real issues that affect young women around the world. This is a podcast made by teen girls for teen girls that will leave you wanting more. So come join us, sit back, and listen in on Spotify. 
Stay updated by following our TikTok and Instagram at hiatg.podcast, where you can also find the link to our website for the latest episodes. Thanks! After all of this has happened, what had happened to the perpetrators? All four criminals were apprehended and put on trial, as they were all juveniles and minors when the crime was committed, but they ultimately received adult sentences. Here is the response of a criminal injustice lawyer, Selena Chu. I think this, uh, that sentence is reasonable if the judge had all of the information about these young individuals. Uh, torturing and murdering a person is about as serious as a crime as there is, and uh, I think it sounds appropriate that these people were tried as adults. And so the sentence uh, does seem to fit the, fit the crime. But the court hid their names. And I think that's wrong. I think you guys should put their names yeah. out there. Well, now it's out there. Yeah. Yet the sentences they received were quite light given the seriousness of their actions. I also want to just mention that they also changed the name. So Hiroshi Miyano was 18 years old at the time of the crime and changed his name to Hiroshi Yokoyama. Joe Ogura was 18 years old at the time of the crime and changed his name to Joe Kamisaku. Shinji Minato was 16 years old at the time, and some sources refer to him as Nobuharu Minato. There was also Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17 years old at the time of the crime. I I honestly just find it hilarious how they're trying to change the name, as if it's gonna just... Like, I mean, clearly we can see they changed their names, so... I don't really get what they were trying to do here. Like, it's the story's already out there. There's no point in changing your name. Like, your story's out there. You know what you did. It's, like, one of the most famous in Japan, right? Exactly. Like, come on. But are they still, like, do you know if they're still, like, Yakuza members? Um, I don't think they are because all of them have been sent to jail. Oh, the Yakuza didn't do anything with jail? No. Okay. They were not bailed out or anything. They couldn't. Mm. However, every one of them is already out of jail. The leader was originally given a sentence of 17 years, but following his appeal, Judge Yuji Yanase increased his sentence to 20 years, which I think is good. Should have been more. Yeah, honestly, it should have been more. Should have been a life sentence. Rather than reducing it. So, yeah. And the three of these youngsters were given sentences of less than eight years, which I think was stupid. I think they should have... No. Like, they should have been life in jail. Honestly, death row, maybe. Honestly. I yeah, mean, honestly, like, like, I know, like, it's meant for people that killed, like... Like, if you... Even if people killed, like, four people, life row, like, death row. But, like, that... Like, that yeah. intense... Like, intensity, like... You deserve, life, like, death row. Yeah, like... People, like... There's this, like, big, um... There's this big conversation going on, like, this big debate that says, like, oh, we shouldn't have death rows anymore. This isn't right. We shouldn't kill people. You know, it was a mistake. This was not a mistake. This was upright torture. Mm -hmm. They knew what they were doing. They were already... Okay, besides the 16-year-old, they're 18. They have matured already. They Mm -hmm. know what they were doing. They were inviting men who are also, like, obviously older than 18, probably. Yakuza members who are, like, in their 40s, probably. Oh, okay. Raping all this girl mm-hmm. so i want to know if they also got a cute like, i'm probably if, not like it's a hundred people how are you gonna name them all off that is true anyways i just hate to think that they're already now around like 30 40 and they're walking around freely i know that's actually like people not recognize them no. i think some of them are also married i just don't know how their wives married yeah and kids with the kids too i just oh, don't know how their wives oh my god just, yeah how do you even introduce like hey first date you know this case? I like that's me. Or yeah, like oh, I have a secret to tell you. I tortured this girl and I raped her. Like, oh my god, that is just no. How do you if like, I no, how do you I even live with yourself like that? That's irritating. So to end it off, um, because this case was so popular, in two thousand four, there was an independently produced Japanese film that was based on the case of the murder of Junko Furuta called Concrete Concrito. Um, in twenty nineteen, three decades after her death, four films have been published. The internal outrage was caused by the torture and death of by Junko Furuta, and her sto- story served as a basis for multiple motion pictures and a manga created by Kamata Yuji. The Joshi Kose Konkurito Dume Satsujin Giken. Sorry if I messed that up. Also known as the Concrete Encased High School Female Murder Case, which was released in 1995 and is the most notable movie. Japanese authors who were motivated by the case wrote at least three titles. 
This case is also very similar to the case of Sylvia Likens, an American teenager, an American teenager that was brutally tortured and murdered by her caregiver. And cases are most often compared.